What I'd like to do in this video is I want to just take a moment to say a few things about what we mean by the moral community and having a moral status. So think of the moral community as all of those things in which a moral claim can apply to. So if you think about a rock or a table or a chair, these are not the sort of things that moral claims can apply to. But if you think about something like a slug or an ant or a mosquito, Usually, these are not the sort of things that we would say moral claims apply to either. But when we start considering other non-human animals, such as a lion or a tiger or bear or what have you, maybe a cat or a dog, now things aren't so clear. But generally speaking, we wouldn't say that when a lion hunts its prey that it's doing something morally wrong. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the lion doesn't belong in the moral community. So by the moral community, let's just start off by saying that if something belongs in the moral community, if something is a part of the moral community, then it's going to be a part of the moral community in virtue of having a moral status. So that raises the question of what exactly does it take to have a moral status? The two different normative theories that we've been considering, on the one hand utilitarianism, and on the other hand Kantian deontology, uh, these different theories will give us different views of what it means to have a moral status. According to utilitarianism, since what this theory is focused on is maximizing happiness or pleasure or trying to prevent as much suffering as one can, this sort of uh, focused on the consequences, maximizing the good, where the good is understood as happiness or pleasure, in a theory like this, having a moral status would involve having the right kind of sentience or, you know, the right, the right ability to experience the world around you, uh, to have the right kind of awareness of your environment, namely being able to experience pleasure and pain and suffering, these sort of things. So having sentience seems to be fundamental to having a kind of moral status according to utilitarianism. Now on Kantian deontology, this view is different. Having a moral status on this view is going to involve having the right kind of rational agency. The ability to think about oneself rationally as well as uh, making life decisions in a rational way, sort of subjecting yourself to the rational moral law, according to Kant, that's the categorical imperative. So it wouldn't just simply be having sentience, right? It wouldn't simply be the ability to experience pleasure or pain, but you might think that it would involve recognizing pain as being a bad thing. So according to utilitarianism, if you have the ability to experience the world around you and have that kind of sentience, then it might be the case that you have a certain kind of moral status. Even if moral claims don't necessarily apply to you, you still might be thought of as being a part of the moral community. As such, you know, certain animals that are sentient it might be morally wrong to cause them pain. Take, for example, you know, your household pet, or a dolphin, or, or an elephant, or maybe even a pig. And so questions about the ethics of eating animals will be relevant for this sort of view. On the other hand, according to Kantian deontology, one would be a part of the moral community insofar as they are a rational agent. So if having a moral status involves having the right ability to think about the world, think about yourself in the world, to reason and subject yourself to the rational law, to the categorical imperative. If, this, if you're the sort of agent that can do this, uh, then you would be a part of the moral community. You would be a part of the moral community because you are the right kind of agent, a rational agent, and so your moral status would come in virtue of your rational agency. So on this view, it's not obvious that any other non-human animals would be a part of the moral community simply in virtue of having sentience. Though humans certainly would, and maybe some other entities, like maybe certain, I don't know, some, some Martians, or maybe some non-human animals that do have the right kind of rational agency. Yet we might think that there are borderline cases. Certain uh, human beings may not have the right kind of rational agency, such as infants or maybe fetuses. Uh, on the other hand, there might be human beings that once were rational agents but no longer are. Maybe if they're experiencing, you know, a certain kind of dementia. And so clearly, having a moral status, what does it take to have a moral status and belong to the moral community? This is going to be a relevant issue for us, both in terms of the different moral theories that we'll be considering, as well as the different moral problems that we're going to be considering as they relate to medical ethics in general.